This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesising 101, where you are one, how's your thesis going away from having a nervous breakdown? In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. If you are new to my channel, welcome, and to my returning viewers, especially those who comment on every video, thank you very much for your continued support. You have no idea how much you make my heart smile. Let's continue our series on thematic analysis. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's get right into it. In the previous tutorial, we spoke about how thematic analysis allows the researcher to extract themes or patterns from qualitative data, which is non-numeric data such as text. There are six phases in thematic analysis, and although these phases are represented as a linear process, you can revisit a phase even if you have already moved on to the next. Today, we will be focusing on the first phase, namely familiarizing yourself with data. In the first part of this tutorial, I will give you techniques of how to do this, and in the latter half, I'll give you an account of how I layered these techniques in one of my research projects. To commence the thematic analysis process, you have to immerse yourself in the data. This means you have to create opportunities to interact with the data in an active way. Active meaning you have to engage the raw data from a critical and analytical perspective. There are many ways that you can do this. One such way is to collect as much data as you possibly can yourself. This will allow you to derive initial analytical interest. For instance, if you are doing a series of interviews, you will pick up broad patterns of what the interviewees are saying. Now, if the interviews were done by a third party, let's say you get a grad student to collect the data on your behalf, you would have to wait until you analyze the data before seeing any patterns arising. Another way to familiarize yourself with data is to repeatedly listen to or read raw data. With each iteration, you gain richer insights into the data as you are continuously picking up new things that you may have missed before. A warning, this is probably going to be the most boring thing that you will ever do in your entire life. But it is a very necessary evil. Even if you have collected the data yourself, repeatedly listening to and or reading your raw data is something that you as a researcher still have to do. Yet another way to immerse yourself in the data is through transcribing the data yourself. Okay, I need to amend my previous statement. Transcribing data is the most boring and dare I say soul-crushing thing that you will ever do in your entire life. But again, this creates so many opportunities for you to become intimately familiar with your data. Now, by no means am I saying that for every study you have to transcribe your own data. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but there have been research projects where I chose to do the transcribing myself because I knew the benefits of the exercise will far outweigh the drawbacks of painstakingly typing out what people have said. Even if you are using audio-to-text software to do the transcribing, it still counts as an active engagement with your raw data, as you need to keep a close eye on what ends up being on the transcript. To give you an idea of how involved familiarizing yourself with data is, here is a process that I followed in one of my more intricate research projects to ensure I really understood my data. First, I performed all my own interviews. During the interviews, I took extensive notes and highlighted items that stood out. This is what we call creating initial analytical interest. I also made audio recordings of the interviews via my phone and video recordings via my laptop. These recordings provided the platform for me to re-listen and re-watch the interviews from different angles. Also, I was a little bit paranoid, so I had two devices going, sometimes even three. Directly after each interview, I transcribed the data using MS Word. The initial transcription was done using only the audio recording, as I wanted to focus on what was being said. To increase the credibility of my research, I transcribed the data verbatim into text as in no correction of grammar and no translation when someone was speaking a language other than English. While transcribing my data, I developed a much deeper understanding of what the interviewee was saying, but I didn't want to lose the initial analytical interest I developed during the interview. So, in order to marry my initial thoughts on the raw data, I added my notes to the transcripts. For this particular study, because I had a lot of data, I used a tool called InVivo, and I imported the transcripts from MS Word into this tool and I added the notes I took during the interviews as annotations. If you don't have a lot of data, you don't need to use something as fancy as InVivo. You can use the comment feature in MS Word to add your initial thoughts to your transcripts. 
Since there is always a chance for the data to be transcribed incorrectly, I compared the already transcribed data to the video recordings and then I made any corrections. While correcting transcripts is important, watching the videos of the interviews at this point had two additional functions. One, I created another opportunity for me to actively engage with my raw data. And two, which in my opinion is the more important reason, I could now focus on how the information was relayed. These nonverbal cues provided additional insights which were added to the transcribed data as notes or annotations. Building these layers into understanding your data will make the rest of your study so much easier. While I was making corrections and adding additional notes, I also indicated grammatical corrections and added English translations. Just to note, these grammatical corrections or translations, and sometimes even clarity, should not disturb the verbatim text. So you can indicate them using braces. We do this so that later in the process, when you need to support your arguments based on your raw data, the verbatim text makes sense to the reader. For this particular study, I had multiple sources of data, not just the interviews, and for each of those data sources, I created multiple opportunities to familiarize myself with data, and you should too. Now a question I get all the time is, when do you know you have created enough opportunities to actively engage with your data, i.e. when is enough enough? Look, there isn't a magical answer to this, but the best way I can describe it is when you reach that point of saturation. As in, you know that you will not learn anything new if you read or listen to this thing one more time. And that is when you know you are ready to move on to the next phase. And that's it for me today. If you have any comments or questions, just pop them into the comment section. I do reply to every single one of them. I mean, I only get like three comments a video, so it's not that hard. <clears throat> Sorry, let me be professional. Like this, share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J signing off. <laughs>